finish strong. Wolf is always scratching. Let's roll. Up at 3.45 a.m., cardio by 4.45 a.m., hitting the iron by 6.15 a.m., in my pickup truck by 7.15 a.m., heading to work, ready to get after it, ready to shoot. There's no substitute for hard work. I'm going to make something out of myself, and it's going to be so good, it's bad. Instead of telling you what I think you should be doing, or what, how you could be better, or I thought, well, let me just speak from the heart, speak from my gut, and really not have anything prepared, but just tell you what's worked for me. And maybe some of the stuff that's worked for me might work for you now, currently, presently, as you guys have your goals and ambitions, but then further on down the line, as you guys continue to live your life. This idea and this notion that you could be anything you want, you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that. You've heard that from the time you were little boys. You hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So, and I'm sure you guys all have your processes. And again, I'm going to tell you what's worked for me. So before a big movie comes out before back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE a Wrestlemania match anything big that would happen I would always take a moment and I just remind myself all right I was evicted when I was 14 we were kicked off the island we couldn't live in Hawaii had no place to live uh, a lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old I would remember that and it allows me then to be present in the moment and understand holy this, the stuff I have around me right now this is the shit that I dreamed of when I was a kid I am here and I played for University of Miami played great teams Warren Sapp Ray Lewis they were my teammates they were balling Warren Sapp was playing tight end at that time I was starting defensive tackle yeah they moved him over to D-line and he looked at me he's like yo dude I'm gonna take your spot. And I said, you ain't taking my spot. He said, I'm gonna take your spot. I said, no, you ain't. We battled and he took my spot. <laughs> now you can imagine how that with me because there goes my opportunity. He went in, switched the defensive tackle, lit the world on fire. Well, what that did, it crushed me, it crushed my dreams. I had a piss poor senior year, zero production, no NFL, no combine invite, nothing. Finally went to the CFL. Calgary Stampeders making $250 a week Canadian. Canadian. Now, I had to send that home to my, uh, to my wife at that time. Had no money. So I remember that. When I got cut from Canada, uh, my dad in his pickup truck came down 4 o'clock in the morning, picked me up at, at, in, in Miami from Tampa. We lived in a little apartment in Tampa. He drove down in his little pickup truck. To, to, to Miami to get me when I was cut from the CFL. And I thought, well, the, I, I leave home like you guys left home. I'm ready to tackle the world, to get after it, achieve my dreams and goals. Crushed by 22, 23 years old. I'm, now I gotta move back in with my mom and dad. I played on great teams though. Wait a second, this is not supposed to be my future. I'm supposed to be in the NFL right now. I'm supposed to be making a lot of coin and buying my parents shit, buying me shit, taking care of my wife, but it never happened. So I pulled out my wallet. I thought, well, let me see how much money I have. I opened it up. I had a five, a one, and change. Well, at least I rounded up to seven bucks. But I thought, God, ain't this a bitch? I got seven bucks in my pocket. Where the f do I go now? What do I do? I can't go back to the CFL. The point comes where you hear that voice, the big run's over. Like, you're done. Right? So I heard that voice. So as Coach was saying, man, I hold on to that. I'm telling you, I keep my back is up against this mother. We laugh, we joke, we have a good time, but my back is still up against this mother I do not forget it. What this also helps me do, and again, it works for me, is at some point, you gotta be tired of not being number one. You have to be, and you gotta play angry, and I play angry. Now, I'm cool and calm with my approach, and when I step out on my field, which is a set, or, you know, like, there's some, and you're always gonna have haters, and haters are like, well, God damn, man, how many movies are you gonna make, or how much shit are you gonna do? Like, you do a lot of shit. I say, yes, it's my ambition. Of course, why not? I could do it, yeah. I love what I do. And not only that, but in what world do we not work every day? My back is up against this thing, you know, and I, and I, and I started to play angry. 
by the way, and, and I still and I still play angry. My last match, Brock Lesnar, transitioned, and I realized if I had to be great at something, I wanted to be great in this world of Hollywood and movie making and producing and entertainment, I had to commit, and like you guys have to commit. Obviously, you commit to something, commit to the goal. So I quietly retired. Two years later, I thought, what did I do with my career? Because my movies were not doing well. I was written off. I was like, it was around 2006, 2007. I was like, I left, I pulled a Jim Brown. I left when I was on top, like number one in the wrestling business. And I left, it was a ballsy, gutsy, some call it stupid move, but I had to commit and I had to follow what was in my gut. What helps me is to keep the hard times in the front of my mind because it allows me to go into these big moments that I've worked my ass off and you guys have worked your ass off. It allows me to go into these big moments with a different perspective. What it also does for me, and again, this just this is what works for me. Like, my back is up against this mother every day. It's against this wall. But it's up against this mother because it's what I believe in. And when my back is against this mother, then there's nowhere to go. But that way. Finish strong. Wolf is always scratching. Let's roll. Up at 3.45 a.m. Cardio by 4.45 a.m. Hit the iron by 6.15 a.m. In my pickup truck by 7.15 a.m. Heading to work. Ready to get after it. Ready to shoot. There's no substitute for hard work. I'm going to make something out of myself, but it's going to be so good it's bad. Instead of telling you what I think you should be doing or what, how you could be better or... I thought, well, let me just speak from the heart, speak from my gut, and really not have anything prepared, but just tell you what's worked for me. And maybe some of the stuff that's worked for me might work for you now, currently, presently, as you guys have your goals and ambitions, but then further on down the line, as you guys continue to live your life. This idea and this notion that you could be anything you want, and you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that, you've heard that from the time you were little boys, you hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So, and I'm sure you guys all have your processes. And again, I'm gonna tell you what's worked for me. So before a big movie comes out, before back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE, a WrestleMania match, Anything big that would happen, I would always take a moment and I'd just remind myself, all right, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii. Had no place to live. Uh, a lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville. I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old. I would remember that and it allows me then to be present in the moment and understand, holy, the, the stuff I have around me right now, this is the shit that I dreamed of when I was a kid. I am here. I played for University of Miami, played with great teams. Warren Sapp, Ray Lewis, they were my teammates. They were balling. Warren Sapp was playing tight end at that time. I was starting defensive tackle. Yeah. They moved him over to D-line. And he looked at me, he's like, yo, dude, I'm going to take your spot. And I said, you ain't taking my spot. He said, I'm going to take your spot. I said, no, you ain't. We battled, and he took my spot. <laughs> Now you can imagine how that with me, because there goes my opportunity. He went in, switched the defensive tackle, lit the world on fire. Well, what that did, it crushed me, it crushed my dreams. I had a piss poor senior year, zero production, no NFL, no combine invite, nothing. Finally went to the CFL, Calgary Stampeders, making $250 a week Canadian. Canadian, I had to send that home to my, uh, to my wife at that time. I had no money. So I remember that. When I got cut from Canada, uh, my dad in his pickup truck came down four o'clock in the morning, picked me up at, at, in, in Miami from Tampa. We lived in a little apartment in Tampa. He drove down in his little pickup truck, 
to, to, to Miami to get me when I was cut from the CFL. And I thought, well, the, I, I leave home like you guys left home. I'm ready to tackle the world, get after it, achieve my dreams and goals. Crushed by 22, 23 years old. I'm, now I got to move back in with my mom and dad. I played on great teams, though. Wait a second. This is not supposed to be my future. I'm supposed to be in the NFL right now. I'm supposed to be making a lot of coin and buying my parents.